working of government towards others in all over the country, especially during the registration exercise. We have heard, and I quote, they are the same people, they are not Ghanaians, unquote. Now the end result is we have issues of succession to contend with. The popular philosopher Estienne, he said, and I quote, significant problems cannot be solved at the level of knowledge that created it, unquote. On behalf of the people of Anglo, I wish to use this opportunity to call on government for an independent investigation into the events of September 25th 2020, which I will prefer to call the Black Friday. You are all welcome to this, to today's lecture on Ever Kingdom and the Independent Africa. I wish you a fruitful deliberations. Maunaira Everduko Eyi Angloko Kochiklu Nakereka Nodu Dumadini. On this note, I wish to call on Professor Belanyo Agadevo to present to us his address on Ever Kingdom and Independent Africa. Thank you. Akbana Utobi Agbama and a blog back with him and Yarokuma Fiadeji, a Tony Ure. Mafia deji, I'm a torrent, but Mafia deji, I cheat to love in our home, and Mafia deji horrible. A ton your regber, Mafia deji horrible. Toby, obey your bra, a Berman, a Glofia, a Bavon, a Berman, and not do Bema, Yakatania, so doy, as a fiato, as a gato. La Gapoyama, me a jigger, Maga Black and Quenya Koshiku, and you have a hosta. And you call me a glee. You know, me no near up, my pummer. Move that a queer Nanyaba a cozo Hanya Buya Fima Maracucu Gara no he, as you know, poly poly man you call. You love an regime, no lafia, cacana poco, and you move here if you go out. Now lafima a drocuro manu would talk on our cozo, so you know, comes here. At this juncture, we're going to invite another special person in our midst, a very powerful person who is the leader of the Anglo Youth Council, is somebody who is already at night, at dawn, whether raining or shining, is on the road. I'm talking about Mayo Agblaza. If you come from America or Britain, you can say Mayo Agblaza. Mayo Blazana la Fima Anglo Youth Yokata So Hio Kata over your demagbano so bana yo fa Yo, Niafu, Mario Blaze, no Kadivie, Ma Garagofian and Atomponu, as you never a Mojimil Tama de Gaglanama Shiama, as you never Mara Gau Glanhafina Ponu, Ta Miafu, Mario Blaze. I told you, no come, a mother ga, a glanauber, Nanunanama, Bautso, but to my voyer, my vomo, if you are a regal, Ponunami, a quad of Tapuho. Rome and Quine Sam. Nianco Sam, Ponunami, Buna Puma, Laffer, Club Bessian, Tonya Tow, Nonya Tow. Yeah, 
Togbe, Avadada, Agbashi, Awosu, Avalia, Wazo. Dr. Koshi Kuho, Tongla, Wazo. Rufi Alaga, de la New Adadako, Wazo, Uncle Sagami Alagwe. Togbe, oh, Mamma, Dumagan, Dumagio, Nikatami, I was. Uh, for one eye. I need you so, Blue Bone and Yanya. We have risen to the challenge. Uh, pandemic here and let him come here with a near Anglo view me. I got them off who are who was not a child. He knew one in a we are on the entire globe. We have a lot to hear from Katan, Lafer, Lagbe. I need to join my blood. We Katan, we are also. We are going to be able to fund us. We now have an international community participating in this. We have to keep to time. So I will quickly go down, and then give the opportunity to others to follow in queue. Thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. Let's make Angola proud. Thank you. Yo, Akbagareko, Madanao, Miafo, Mayor Blazer, Obama, Miss Ba, Majiji Fu, Unyamo, Bahama Bonadu, Kakura, Namana with Pico, and you know me. The Gapuyama, no vineyard, Ba. Bado a yawi agre a miaduma a ye wad miapa and fialaga afia. A full koshi kubo, and a moon popa, mamada, maker, a punami, a ba afia. A full koshi bomaji agaka. I have program program so at this point I'll go right ahead um, to introduce the speaker for the day. Um, the speaker is somebody that I've known and I've been following for the past 10 years. And it's a huge privilege for me today to be introducing such a person to be the main speaker for us for the day. The speaker and his first degree in biochemistry from University of Science and Technology, Kumasi. He followed up with MA in social science with emphasis on leadership at Azusa Pacific University in California. And ladies and gentlemen, as if that were not enough, he followed up with his PhD in interpretation of theories at Leeds University, England. The speaker, while he was working for Campus Crusade, which he has spent the past four decades working, established the International Leadership University, which was originally African Leadership and Management Academy, which offers graduate degrees in leadership and management. He is also the founder of international, the founder and president of International Leadership Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dadevo is an author of several books. I'll mention a few very quickly. Leading Transformation in Africa, Revival and Spiritual Awakening, Approaches to Christianization in Africa, moral vision and national transformation, just to mention a few. Ladies and gentlemen, 
the speaker is an Anglo from the Royal Ajovia clan and is married to one wife, <laughs> Mrs. Elizabeth Ayika Adiko, who we are privileged to also have on this call. With three children, Elikam, Elinam, and Ayram. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Professor Delano Adadevo, our main speaker for the day. Please help me. Please let me see you. Give him a shout out. Let's use the chat box. Let's use the just bo chat, chat box to welcome him massively. Yes. Prof, if you are with us, please take it over. Oh, Akbar, Novi, Kenneth. Togbi Agbasi Awusu the second. Avadada of Anglo, Dr. Silvanus Kwashi Kuvo, the CEO for Hogbe Institute. Togbiwo Mamao Nufiala Gao Sofo Anglo Vio Kata Madogbanamilo. Amazrola Miadomi, Ta Maupotuala Yuvubema. It is a great privilege for me today to be able to share some brief time with you, fellow citizens of Anglo State, to discuss a rather important subject, the subject of Ewe Kingdom and Independent Africa. I like to begin by saying that we are living in a rather difficult time in the history of the Anglo people and Ewe people across the continent of Africa particularly West Africa, and also across the Atlantic. And our discussion today is supposed to help us as a people understand how to position ourselves in light of our current situation. And then most importantly, look at the aspect of the way forward. To facilitate my sharing, I like a little bit of empowerment so I can share my screen. So if there are technical people who have that responsibility, can you please allow me to be able to share my screen? I have a PowerPoint presentation that will make it easier for people to follow what I'm sharing. Oh, the host okay. went to a different Dela. Oh, it went to a different Dela. Okay, well, uh, greetings so we to, try to reclaim it. Uh, greetings to that fellow Dela. Uh, okay. You have it now, Prof. Okay. Yes. I will say that uh, one of the first point I'd like to make is that we as a people have been on a journey and we trace our journey all the way back to some will say Egypt, uh, but I will say Upper Egypt or the Cushitic area, uh, which essentially is the southern part of Egypt. That was the place where 
we had the center of African civilization and the Ewe people were part of that as our identity got clarified over time. And uh, you can verify that by going to Sudan today and interacting with Sudanese uh, on some names that we have that they also still have. And they will be able to share with you the current meaning. So our journey actually started from there and we have continued with that all the way to the Atlantic coast. I'll give us a, a big backdrop to that. But the main point I like to start with is that we became states, states that were autonomous, but that had a sense of common identification. And there were characteristics to our state that we should all be aware of. Of course, what you are seeing now is our political structure or organization. At the very base of that, you have the families and clans. And above that, you have the towns or villages for in, in, in our tradition for families, you of course have family heads and then you have the clans, which will include many other families. But when they lived in a town, there had to be a Dufia who will provide leadership uh, in the form of chieftaincy for the people. But above that, a collection of towns, uh, you will have divisions and the chiefs of the divisions provided uh, leadership for those collections of towns. And of course the paramount chief, uh, who is the head of state uh, for the Anglo people is the Awa Mafia. So you will see that there, is, there was a sense of political and social organization to who we are as a people. And just to mention a few things about uh, our organization. Uh, the first one is that uh, we had the delegating of decision-making authority all the way to the family level. You know, if you have disputes, first of all, the family structure must be able to solve the dispute before you will go to the Dufia. And those structures where the family is organized and you have head of family who can ensure that there is harmony and there is progress amongst the people cannot be taken for granted because you don't find it anywhere that simply. And so it is an asset that we will have to guard. And our leadership, I will say, is also constitutional. Our leaders did not lead by discretion. There are proper ways of doing things. And you do the right thing at the right time. In actual fact, it is also part of a distinctive of the Ewe people that doing things the right way at the right time is the mark of maturity. And so when you come to the English word, for instance, when you are talking about a faithful person, when you come to the our language, it is not a faithful person in terms of somebody who has committed himself or herself to an issue consistently over time, but it is someone who has committed himself or herself to the issue in the right way, at the right time, at the right place over time. And so we say, so that the, the description of a faithful person is deeper in our understanding, is deeper in our understanding. And that is a characteristic of uh, aware people. 
And when you look at our approach to leadership, uh, we do not promote dictatorships in our political organizations. We promote consultative leadership so that Abu Amashia works with the Council of Elders, works with the Military Council, and uh, they lead together. That spirit of consulting and working together as a people. Then, of course, we are democratic. And by saying that we are democratic, I'm not implying necessarily that uh, we use the ballot box to select our leaders. But we believe that the people must be involved in leadership and they must hold their leaders accountable. So we say a do man no fear mo, a fear no do man. The people do not live with the king, it is the king who lives with the people. In other words, power for leadership comes from the people. So when we when we look at this, what it tells us is that as a people, we were on our journey. And on that journey, all things being equal, we would have emerged as states, perhaps as a union of states, which will have been the nation of the aware people or the aware nation. That will have been the arrangement if we didn't have any interruptions. States were autonomous and they are autonomous. At the beginning of the 18th century, uh, we had about 120 states, aware states. And the states were held together by common history, common religion, common language, and common events. Now, when you are looking at our common history, we are able to recount our history. When it comes to written history, we can't go beyond the 14th century. From the 14th century down, we are able to look at our history from Ileife to Ketu, and then from Ketu to Tado Ngochie and all the other places. But we are able to trace our history that way. And that makes us unique because we are able to follow all our dispersions. And then we were united also by a common religion. And in our common religion, Mauga as the supreme being, that commitment to Mauga as the supreme being, and later on to Seth as the supreme being, united us as a people. We had that common commitment. And then we have our common language and common events of which Hobetoto is the main event that we are able to look to as a people. Now, when you look at a group of people who are able to relate to one another, maintain autonomy, and yet relate to one another based on these marks of identity, common identity, you are actually looking at a developing people, if not a developed people. Because to reach a stage in your journey as a people where you appreciate autonomy for different states, and yet at the same time, you are able to encourage togetherness 
or oneness or union or unity. Without autonomy, you are then working with the principle of unity in diversity. And it is an essential characteristic of maturity. So I see the aware states and what was the forming common aware nation as one of the success stories of the continent of Africa. Even though autonomous, the states were able to form alliances when we had to fight common enemies. And so that was there. We also could come together, for instance, as we voted so, uh, to commemorate our escape from oppression and uh, our pursuit of freedom. So my position is that if there weren't European interruptions in the our identity and our socio-political formation, the evolution was possibly leading toward a nation consisting of autonomous states held together by common identity, a common vision, and a common constitution. This, however, we were not able to achieve because of the interruptions that we have uh, experienced as a people. But the, the key question is, where are we now? And where should we be going? Well, like the rest of Africa, uh, we are caught in very difficult circumstances. We cannot recreate history. And my personal view is that we cannot redefine the borders, especially redefining the borders based on other European demarcations. If we want to redefine the borders, if we could redefine the borders, we will redefine the borders by going to our pre-European situation, but not to one European situation in competition with another. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a challenge that we have to face very carefully because uh, when you want to go back to one version in competition with another version, both European, the, the people who suffer are the African people. And the, the question then is, if we cannot rewrite our history, we cannot revise the, the interruptions in our evolution as a people, what do we do now? What do we do now? I believe that uh, our leaders at the continental level have drawn a very good agenda, what we call the Agenda 2063. The Organization for African Unity was formed in 1963. So 2063 will be 100 years since the formation of the Organization of African Unity. Uh, keep in mind that these hundreds of years are significant because 1963 will form the Organization of African Unity, but 1863 was when Abraham Lincoln uh, declared the freedom for slaves uh, in the United States. So you have 1863, a very uh, important milestone in the journey of African people, 1963, another important milestone. And then 2063 is going to be another important milestone. And according to Agenda 2063, we are working towards the vision of becoming the United States of Africa or a continent that though 
respects the sovereignty of the nations will be one continent with one voice. And the beginning of the common trade area uh, for Africa, it's, it's, it's an achievement that we have to celebrate. But following that uh, will be the free movement, not only of goods, but of African people themselves. So I would hope this will become a reality that we will, we will be able to have our African Union passports, which will allow you to cross any borders on the continent as an African. And in addition to that, we will be able to do business with one another. And so what that does is that it actually softens the solidity of the boundaries that we inherited from, from Europe and makes it possible for us to be able to work with what I'm calling the concept of nation within nations. And what that means is that we can freely move and engage our people in Togo, in Benin, and in Badagri, because there will be free movement. And we can actually seek to do some things in common. Now, one of the realities that I'm not sure we are fully aware of is that as our people, our influence is global. If we study the history carefully, we'll know that a majority of the slaves in Haiti and to some extent uh, Dominican Republic are people of our foreign origin. And we have a responsibility as our people to cross the Atlantic and conscientize our brothers and sisters on the other side of the Atlantic, give them a hand of fellowship and provide an encouragement for them in their own journey in the Western hemisphere as they are also pursuing freedom. The people of Haiti are our people primarily, and they are, they are a great people because of what they achieved for Africans as a whole. We know from history that August 21, 1791, way back in the 18th century, they were the first group of African people who fought for independence from an European power. And they were successful. And what is important to keep in mind is that uh, Toussaint Louverture, who was leading this revolt, was able to see success. When he was coming to the end of his life, Napoleon tried again, sending troops to regain power. This, is, this was Napoleon the Great. The Lieutenant of uh, Louverture, the Saline, ensured that Napoleon suffered a second defeat in 1803. So that January 1, 1804, the people of Haiti declared themselves free. It was the first successful revolt of an African people across the Atlantic against European authorities. This is a unique achievement that must contribute to our ever pride as a people. So we cannot work on an ever kingdom in a local sense that we are all moved 
from our different locations around the world to one locality, that one is lost on us. But we can work with the concept of a distributed nation, a distributed nation. So we know where our people are and we engage them to collectively build on our future. This is a, a lecture, but in a sense, it's also a family conversation. As great as we are, if you look at our history, as successful as many of us are, as educated as we are, we do not have the fundamentals in place to ensure that we are working towards the development of our people. I will say that if for us as Anglo people, Anglo Gan is our capital, what are we doing to ensure that Anglo Gan is a modern developed city? If I want to look at the greatness of a people and I go to the capital of the people, the major city of the people, I will want to see a palace for their king, a palace that is not only a place of residence, but a palace that speaks to the culture and the history of the people. A palace that will invoke the, the vision, the pride, the identity of the people in the minds of those who will visit that location. For the Anglo people, we do not have one such a place. I know that our chiefs do well to find their own places of residence and use them, but we cannot continue into the future that way. With the richness of our history, if you imagine a palace where you actually built the walls as we had uh, in Ochi, you know, as to, to, to just, replay that history and you had the footsteps of people walking backwards away uh, that's a lot of history rich, rich history that people want to visit so that's one point uh, for us to look at and i believe that uh, not only the anglo state but all the other states must ensure that the citizens of those states contribute resources for building dignifying palaces. Then, of course, investment in businesses. I travel to the Volta region from time to time when I'm in Ghana. When you are going to Strongway, my, my, my place of uh, origin, uh, as an Adadevo, or you are going to Keta or whatever. If there is traffic, then there is a funeral. Otherwise, you will not meet traffic. You will not meet traffic because there are industries or there are retail businesses that are booming. So how do we, especially speaking with the youth, how do we bring businesses to the Volta region? I think after uh, half a century of waiting, we can comfortably or reasonably come to the conclusion that government will not do it for us. There is ample evidence that governments will not develop the land of the Ewe people the way we want, whether we are looking at that in Ghana or in Togo. We are in very difficult circumstances in both uh, nations. 
And so there has to be a commitment on our part as a people to promote the whole um, idea of investing back home, investing back home. I look at the mansions we have built all over, whether we are in Kumasi or Cape Coast or Accra or Tema. Let's be doing things back home. That is very, very important. Then the other thing to keep in mind is that the aware culture, the Yoruba culture, the Wolof culture, to mention a few, are unique African cultures that carry a lot of significance for the rest of the continent and the world. And there is, there is going to be a great loss to all of humanity if cultures like that of the Ewe people and others diminish and get weakened. The reason I'm saying this is because as we do research on a lot of issues pertaining to Africa and even to the world, we realize that in these cultures, Yoruba, Ewe, Wolof, and others, we do have some richness of history that can contribute to understanding some things that are difficult to understand. And I will share some of them here, uh, not to say that these are definite uh, positions, but they are positions that we are continuing to investigate. For instance, one of the challenges uh, we face in, uh, in discussing the subject of religion and the name of God is uh, whether God, according to the people of Israel, is Yehovah or Jehovah or Yahweh or what? But one of the suppositions is that the Yahweh cult, some will call it cult, Yahweh, Yahweh religion, may well have the original pronunciation or something closer to your original pronunciation of the name of Jehovah, so that it's more likely to have been Yahweh or Yahweh. And you see that people who are trying to come to that are struggling whether they should put V or W uh, because the right sound may well be with the Ewe people. That's one. Another example is when you are looking at monotheism in Africa because there were monotheistic revolutions in Africa um, before Christianity and Islam, when Amon or Amon Re uh, was the supreme god among the African people. And you, you, you will notice that uh, that name Amon Re was in reference to the God of the sun or the sun God, but also acknowledging the name Amon itself means the hidden one, which means that people are aware that even though God is in the sky, he is also not in that object called the sun. And you come to something like that, you begin to appreciate once again, here is a monotheistic revolution in Africa, and Amon, when, when God Amon was supporting kings, this is the assumption, the kings were given working principles, working principles. And those working principles were called the principles of Mat, M-A-A-T. 
and they included justice, righteousness, and truthfulness. Now, there is what you call the Ma Confederation, M-A-A, -A, and those will be those who followed that Ma principle uh, during their migrations, like the Ma Dinke people in West Africa. Ma is also represented as a feminine god or goddess. And it is also a subject of investigation whether Ma Wu is not a continuation of the Ma principle to say Ma is the greatest. These are investigations that we are doing in the religious theological sphere. And so I share these things, not because we have arrived at conclusions. I share these things to encourage us to know that we owe it to the rest of humanity to take our culture, our history, our language, our religious persuasions and philosophy very, very seriously because we are an asset or a blessing to humanity. We are also a global people and we are a people of principle. We are industrious, but we have the unique responsibility to take our entrepreneurship back to the homeland not only abroad, but back to the homeland. So let me just stop here and we can continue interacting uh, if questions are raised. But uh, thank you very much for the opportunity and may God bless the Anglo state and may God bless the Ewek Kingdom and the peoples of West Africa and the world. Thank you. Ayo Akbanao, Napa Nufia Laga, Professor Delano Adadavo. Lanyanya Guyame, Magasunu, Masunu Ba, New York, Yamasrola, Yabama Po, Maquilla, Unufia Fiamma, E. Maquisaban of Vinegarel, a Kaji, Funyo, Daniel, Tobino, a Kaji, who house room, and we had uh, one of your fiamma, mere a do a quadada a garana, we may be a mouse of Balisa by and tall, no shamino, no a ballet cuna cojima fat, tsunami and na na yijian, tsunami ra, caca, nijibana, tora plong vie, na miam mahu, a jiba, mia bia bia biao. Mia bia 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 ru sok bia ra la mia shi mia sok bia mia we ye na mia bia ra reklami ha a farm a laba a garufa ya po pana la na na anyo jiji na na ke nufi la bubuto ma de kuku ba na tora kono tavi ma ga kwe seba Tara kama dada huwa bale niya togi ogbe ugi ni homi matsuru na lehata majiba mana kakla niya togi u ba togi agbeshi awusu vali ike niya niya papa dada iha ala kla lo fima na biya biya rava ike ugal niya panu fia la gashi matengu no tsio togi u la fima dekla magbani togi u kata la kaji matsubari na miba niya zaru. Na nyaba bia bia ova na mia teng a bara mia fong nya do akba la ka ko ya ma ma amo buga na ama yo ba yo bia 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 a le ata na a bia 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 ta flat se ka tsu u a shie do raji na do shie raji a ka ma de ga nu no na na bia 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 a ma de kuku 
Mammy Bermy awake, we echo. A dremaganum, Jicumaganum, or Cabo Hun or so. A laba fickle on all a few mouths of Bolisa from Sir Razolana. Ne, make a tamia put a tango away on you at the Putoko. Aponami, Namara, Dosh Regico, near you. Chapman. Are you a Mirko Kozo Chapman? Kozo Chapman do a shiraji. Lehata Kozo Chapman. A Maraganu. A Zagba, Yabia, I sure, I'd say them. Maybe a beer hog about my ton half year, I shame them upon Mufiaga or do Kozo Chapman, Elbo. Yo, Mato. You Alaba a quay sockle and yapa no fool at his hammer go do. As Sumata, you ever ever a low of a kingdom do. Awa van vie, a low awa, a magadaro vie, gomeneba, yapa do call Gana Mamela. Mere Adashim Yapa Muso. Aba du kovu vuvuna amie da shimia fa unso na jibudwa ta ma ganya ba yenya kingdom ta nya biya biya nya ba na ye tro kingdom a ozu of commonwealth de ma susu ya uchia chang plimi de ma sokle susu mo ha yenya nya biya biya akwa. Ago, a uh, matrobo, a uh, man of the Alex Do, a uh, ma a garama glano, burn an agarama nabio biabia. Yo, Alex Do, Miela told you no. A judge in a row, which puts Ocadia, a man of your legs do. And then a man, a grimace of Basaracadura, Pover, Canam or Ashemua. Are you a yeah? A let's do, get a magic blow, Yabia. Alex, do a taflat say, Wunu for the coma baka, I hear jig balang lomo lane, muddy demo. Lekona no, hear jig balang lomano, Zazaba, Maraca, Maga, sickly on an atanko bajia. Atanya bakale manu. Ayo, a man of Alex, do not tell one rule, or be a biarura. Nanguina Marquis Macon, Napano Fialaga, but talk will not do. You a miato, Amyana, Miafonado, a Kozu Chapman for the Abianchi, and the Agaho, the Abiabu Waro. Thank you. Uh, the concept of kingdom and commonwealth. No, I agree with uh, Chapman that working with the idea of a commonwealth is, is, is better. 
uh, when I was talking about, uh, when I talk about a work kingdom, I do not mean to set up a competition between the our states and uh, the nations in which we find ourselves, the modern nations in, within which we find ourselves. Uh, so the concept of Commonwealth will well carry the vision. But compare our situation, if you don't mind, to that of the Ashanti Kingdom. You see, the Ashanti Kingdom uh, is intact in a lot of ways. Political leaders in Ivory Coast who trace their route to the Ashanti Kingdom, they come to Ghana visit to the Asantehini. The Asantehini has his own initiatives from his uh, throne to seek development funds uh, for education and for development for the people. In addition to what government will do. And the Ashantis support they are king in such ventures. So what I am saying is that uh, as a people, Angola people and Ewe people, we are almost known for building our empires abroad instead of bringing our resources home to support our paramount chief and other chiefs to develop our own homeland. And so there is a sense in which we can use the concept of Commonwealth, but we have to know that my president or the president of my nation is a Jubilee house, but the Awamafia of my Ewe state, Anglo state is also at Anglo I have a dual responsibility in that sense. And if we have that awareness, uh, the nomenclature, what words we use for it uh, should not be the main issue. But I do uh, appreciate the caution there that uh, this taking out of context or taking too far can create a sense of competition. So thank you, Kozo Chapman, for, for that input. Yo made a bono a mufia laga a macarajiba mianovi cozo chapman a nururuma o yigino ye a marabia biabiada yavu bama maclagavia over a can we not have an academic for the study of agriculture? institutions, practices, and other life and philosophies of the other people. Thank you. It's very important for us to have such places um, like I said, we do a disservice to humanity if we don't have our own culture uh, and history and philosophy on life well researched and articulated in a way that is transferable, we can share with others. And I think this can be said by all other peoples. So I, I, it's, a, it's a very good idea. Uh, it's a very good idea. And that kind of study, as I said before, we have to take you all the way. We have to trace our journey from the Sudan region all the way to the Atlantic. And the study must go all the way back. Because uh, if, you, if, if you are actually interacting with Africans, you see that we have some shared history with a with the Yoruba people from the Oyo, uh, Oyo Empire era. But then in the same Nigeria, if you see the Tif people of Nigeria, T-I-V, 
be a kente of a keta black and white and a queer a circle of a doctor you you will not see difference there and then when you listen to the thief language itself you hear some other words so we have to go all the way back uh, to Sudan and then when you go to the Sudanese and you are asking the tribes even names like Ngochi they have those names there now so there is so much work for us to do to be able to bring um, our history to one place and I don't think that we've done all of that work so I very much support that idea I, I do believe that the universities will have some resources already, but I think the extensive research I'm talking about, tracing our roots back all the way to the Cushitic Empire, uh, which, is, which was in Upper Egypt um, or the Southern part of Egypt, that kind of research has not yet been done and partly because of the instability in the Sudan region. You, Akbar. Thank you very much, Prof, for that uh, response. Uh, I may be the Emmanuel Dobe. I believe Emmanuel Dobe, you're satisfied with that answer. Uh, the next one I'm going to read. It says, uh, "I think the idea about dignifying palaces." Sorry, I need to take it again. Oh, oh. So I'm going to go to the first one. It says, please, for our growth, what are some of the resources we have? Uh, this is coming from Tamanya. And uh, I don't, I, let me add another one, Prof, coming from my as I say, Prof, would you prefer the current efforts of um, yes, let me take it again. It says, Prof, would you prefer the current efforts of Western Togoland aligned towards Agenda 2063? That is the free movement of people, goods, services, and cultural integration among the Ever Kingdom stroke Commonwealth. So the question is, would you prefer that? Then I will add the yeah. third one so that you take all the three. Okay. Uh, if you would. Yes. So this one is coming from William Tashiyama. And Dr. Tashiyama says, Prof, don't you think the challenges we face regarding the topic and in specific terms, the underdevelopment in Angloland is partly or mainly caused by our Anglo leadership? I am taking about, I am talking about chieftaincy disputes, which made some of us not to appreciate Hoba, etc. So I will leave it there for Prof to respond and then we'll continue with the rest. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I will say that uh, for resources, I think our history departments at our universities will give us a start. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will say it again that we need to do further research. We need to be confident as aware people that we have a lot to offer to the rest of humanity and do further research. Uh, but we do have something to start with when you go to the history departments for our universities. On the Western Togoland uh, subject, a rather sensitive one, um, I, will, I will say that, uh, yes, my, my preference is for Agenda 2063 framework. Because if you look at what is happening in, uh, in, in Cameroon, for instance, when the Cameroonians are going back to uh, German British demarcations, as opposed to French, uh, it's almost a no win situation. You can't rewrite the boundaries uh, without a lot of uh, injury, uh, a lot of deaths and instability. So, the, the African Union is taking us to a place which I think is very, very wise. It's very, very wise. It's taking us to the place we were before the Europeans came, 
which is taking us to the place where we are one people and we move freely across our borders. We trade freely amongst ourselves and the national boundaries uh, will not be as solid uh, in the future as they are now. Because at the end of the day, we'll be Africans and then we'll be Ewers and Ghanaians. So that common uh, element of being Africans first uh, is really what will, uh, will, will ease the tension. Um, if we want to be Anglo first, before we are Ghanaians and then Africans later, we are gonna have problems. When you go back into our history, um, way before we had invasions uh, from Phoenicians, Assyrians, Greeks, and so on, uh, you will see that we were referred to commonly as Kushites or later on by the Greeks as Ethiopians. They looked at us collectively as a collective one unit. But then amongst ourselves, uh, you will have different groups of, uh, of, of Kushites. And I think that when we had that common uh, identity, we were able to work uh, together against our common enemies. And that is where we need to go again. We need to be Africans first. And then we are also ours and Ghanaians, and that will apply to all. If, if we have that identity, it saves us from having to fight and establish boundaries. And by the way, you are fighting to establish a boundary proposed by another European power. It's not the smartest thing to do. We don't kill ourselves based on divisions and identity icons created by foreign entities. So that uh, would be my approach to it. Now, is, is, is the, the issue not leadership? Is the problem not leadership? I would say that, yes, there are aspects of it that can be attributed to leadership, but the broader issue the broader issue is really our mindset and our what has become a characteristic of us that we are afraid to invest in our own homeland. Because when you are investing back in the homeland, the assumption is that uh, you may attract envy and they may fight you spiritually or you know, you're going to face problems and people are not free to go there. The reasons may be superstitious, the reasons may be economic, but at the end of the day, it is a well-known fact in, in Ghana that everywhere people don't invest back home. And so our leaders cannot do without us. But when we, when we join them collectively, we can up the game in terms of our leadership understanding and practice. But I will also say that uh, the International Leadership Foundation, which uh, we, we started and I have the privilege of providing leadership for, uh, exists to provide leadership capacity for Africa so that we can experience transformation and development. And so we will want to be part of the solution uh, as we continue to deliberate on how best to move forward. Akbanao, uh, Prof, thank you very much. Uh, international leadership with Nia Oboloa, Mianovi, a Ken, a Yao Bado, a Lema Gongongong, the Anjiz of Garanami. Bamiohami Akura Mianovi or Quadong Wazi, a bear a basasar and echo, Namiohamia Akere, me Colombia on Shia in Gobe. A Mianovi de la de Cosheji, a de la Coshegia, but a cucumber gano, no. Garamanami Pla will be a bia. Um, Akba. Uh, be a be a lashing your buffy, uh, pointer lashing, maybe more of point than be a be a. Um, 
Professor Adadovo Akpa, uh, most of the things she said um, um, really introduced us to new ways of thinking about the problem we have. And uh, I agree with most of them. Uh, but then um, talking about Agenda 2063, um, we are mistaking economic agendas for cultural agendas. Because if you take Agenda 2063, like you said, it's about breaking the barriers down so that goods and services, including people, could move across the borders. Uh, but then if you take the issue that you have discussed today about people's cultural values, the, the ones that were broken down during colonialism and all that. So for example, if you take the Ghanaian state right now, right? Why are you and I Ghanaians? We are only Ghanaians because somebody decided to draw some lines. And for we, the Ewe people, those lines were never corrected. The colonial lines remained and then the country lines were drawn, right? So if we want to talk as if those who feel that they have been treated unfairly, they don't have a point, I think that wouldn't be fair to them because point low, shell uh, cultural identity, the moment the park. And there's an attack on our identity to the extent that some of us who live in foreign countries have to consistently tell people that we are Ghanaian, right? But so for me, even though I agree with the point that the kind of route you want us to take, your main argument is succession is not a, a, a way out right now because we should be working towards one Africa. I wholeheartedly agree with you. But I think where I will um, part ways with you is, is that uh, for us to build one Africa, we have to do some hard work. And that hard work starts with breaking the colonial boundaries down. And of course, I know that is not going to be an easy job. In a way, it's, so many people even say it's impossible to break the colonial boundaries down. But for now, somebody like me having to cross a border to visit my other family in Togo, I'm not happy with that. My dream would have been to, to form a true aware, aware that like the colonial boundary there will be broken down for me so that I do not have to cross a border. And then the other thing is the language. Uh, ask me, maybe apart from uh, Dr. Kbado, platform me guilty because communication on me. And that is some of the effects we have suffered, the negative we have suffered as a result of colonialism, where for us to even make comprehensive presentation. We need to make the view ja ja ja. from beginning to the end, and that wouldn't have been even possible if colonialism hadn't happened, where somebody imposed their language for us. So for me, for cultural one Africa to happen, we have to even start discussions like uh, one language. No, I'm not saying one language for like, for example, adopting Swahili for everybody and getting rid of the English or remain reserving the English as an international communicative language. Okay, so summarizing in two seconds as yeah. Okay, uh, so then I'll leave my, my point here because I think the point is made. My last point is in my two seconds. I think we need to put effort into bringing more women to the platform because as you can see, all this discussion, we have heard men's voices, but very, very few women who are even in the meeting. So we have to work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I know the the
Mm-hmm. So it's two of us now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with you. If we could go back to the situation before colonialism and the boundaries that were drawn in 1884, 1885, it would be a happy day for all of us. But our leaders reflected on this and realized that it would be a a daunting task to be redrawing the boundaries now. Um, It's very, very difficult. And so it is within that difficulty that we are saying, let's work towards a one Africa agenda where we will actually have a one African language that we promote in the in the place of uh, the European languages, and then also promote our own uh, local languages. But the one Africa vision is providing an environment, and within that environment, we can allow the unity in diversity principle to work. So it is. It is good if you can go back to what was before the boundaries were drawn. The practical reality is that it will be very, very expensive uh, to attempt to do that continent wide, because it's not only our people who have that uh, ambition, it is also other ethnic groups who have that ambition. And so collectively, we have to accept, uh, I think, and and I accept other views on the subject. So I'm not trying to say my view is the view that we should adopt. But I personally think that we have to work towards a future where our boundaries are not as solid. They are not as defining. We are one African people who celebrate our diversities and we are investing in the developing of our unique ethnic identities within the one Africa context, as opposed to the current context of Nigeria, Ghana, Uganda, Zimbabwe. So that's uh, that would be my view on it. Uh, but like you, I will say, Namiatunga Yimegbe, and Mokatana Tro, and Abalio, no, if you have over Hanya Dizonamiakata. I will agree with you on that. Sorry, Akbano Prof. Biabia Lokata Majiba Makla, Biabia Okata Ungorami Kada na Prof Nadu Katong Labadoli, our the Sosoga Queen. Banta it's Ogamala, I'd so Miapa Siena President Boy, you're number Dr. Chachu Yamari. Dr. Chachu Yamari. Where is the One Africa agenda? I have not seen it before. Can Prof share it? Uh, so Prof be thinking about that as I continue to sh- uh, read the rest. Uh, this one is coming from Alex Doe. It says, Professor mentioned that it is the responsibility of, of the people to invest back home or build their homeland. May I know if Prof has identified some challenges why ever people are not invest, investing back home. The next one goes specifically to our Avadada. It says, Togbi Avadada the second, we the concerned citizens of Western Togoland are not happy the way things are going on the land. Uh, what are you doing about it for us? It's coming from Yevuga Daniel. Then we have um, John J. Johnson says, Prof, please, what employment opportunities are there in Angloland other than farming and fishing? How best can we develop the service industry in Anglo beyond the government jobs like teaching, nursing, etc.? More so, tourism along the Anglo coast is booming now. What arrangements are in place to secure employment for our people, especially the youth in this industry? 
Like I keep saying your questions must be very brief. Uh, just go straight to the point, my wonderful people. Uh, so I will now allow the professor to respond, then I will bring you the rest. Prof, Ekatelobo. Are you uh, Tattoo Nyamari from Tattoo? Yeah. I know you are from uh, Azovia clan, so it's good to meet you. Uh, my name is Chidi, so I come directly after you. Wow. Uh, Agenda 2063, you can find it on the internet. Uh, if, you, if you go to African Union Agenda 2063, you should be able to download a PDF version uh, to actually read. It is well done, but like everything else concerning we, the African people, it is well done. It is in the iCloud. Uh, people don't know about it. <laughs> okay. And so I will appreciate if all of us will download Agenda 2063 and study it and use it as a framework for our development. Why AWS are not investing back home? That's a very deep question. <laughs> it's a very deep question. I think that uh, I want to simplify the response. The first one is religious superstition. Um, as a people, when you look at one of the challenges of uh, our African religions is that uh, it's, it's a religion in some ways, it's a religion of power games. It's a religion of power games and you want to see who is more powerful. Um, and we look at, we follow different gods and our commitment is to the most powerful. And so you have an environment of power games, but then there is also something that is characteristic of us and it's not only aware people, but particularly aware people based on our subject for today, which is that we are secretive in terms of our plans. And we are secretive in terms of our plans because there is the belief that somebody who knows your plans can actually twat your plans, uh, what we call in the streets of Accra, against people. You know, you have against people coming and working against your plan. And so you have an environment of suspicion. You have an environment of fear. You have an environment of secrecy. You have an environment of mistrust. It's all coming from a wrong appreciation and appropriation of religion. Uh, so in the place of that, if we were to be more scientific, more scientific uh, to, to look at the realities that our, our youth need jobs and science works, uh, irrespective of your religious position, science works. Science works because the the, the, the principles of science were instituted by God, who, 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 who is the author of religion as well. And so when you sow a seed in good soil, you will reap uh, a plant uh, that is also good. And that kind of moving from superstition, uh, from secrecy and fear to a more scientific mindset, uh, would be would be helpful. So the Kwelakpaji Avudupuma Duagao and uh, showing one another where power lies and so on should give way to a free uh, a free people who are very very safe, secure spiritually, and can work with compassion to build back home. So I would say that superstition in the sphere of religion is one. But the second one is that we are um, we have been a migrating people. We have been a migrating people for a long time. Uh, we actually uh, settled uh, in our new homelands uh, 17th 
latter part of 16th century, but 17th and 18th century, we got settled. And so what we are good at, uh, really, if you look at it, we food processing. If you want to go on a long journey, Airways can give you all the food items you need uh, for the journey. That's what we are good at. Now, settling and building thriving uh, kingdoms, I think uh, we are, is something we have to engage with now because we have the culture of being a migrating people. So we have to now build a culture of a settling people who are actually possessing the land, adding value to it, and building infrastructure. Uh, but what we see happening is that we still keep our migrating culture. So you see us still moving, you know, so we, some of us are in Kumasi, some of us are in Cape Coast, and we settle and we are comfortable, we build our kingdoms there. Uh, we have to now have a settler's mindset as opposed to a pilgrim's mindset because we are now home and we have new homes. So that's, uh, that's looking at it from the worldview uh, perspective. So I will mention those two. Now, in terms of employment opportunities in Angloland, I will say that uh, there are many opportunities, but it's not an issue of whether or not there are opportunities in Angloland. It's an issue of whether or not we have investors who are interested in doing business in, uh, in Angloland. Uh, our areas of strength, for instance, as I already mentioned, uh, we are good in food processing. Uh, and I think that uh, all the things that we have contributed to Ghana from Yakayeke to Ayibe Biscuit, uh, you can mention all of them, including Gary, which is famous. Uh, these are all our technologies. Uh, we should build on those and actually have food processing uh, factories uh, in the in the Volta region. That's a strength that we have. Uh, on a on a bigger scale, we also have oil and gas, uh, uh, which is there. And uh, those who have the means can can look at potential investors who can come in. But I believe that that probably is in the realm of, of government. But in addition to that, tourism is a very big area. Uh, our area is beautiful. Volta region is a beautiful region. And so we can actually go into tourism in a big way. I come from the small, uh, I say I come from Strongway, but we also uh, come from Sava, the small island Sava. If we had a very nice resort uh, on the Sava Island, I'm sure people will enjoy spending the weekend there. So tourism provides us a lot of good opportunity as well. So food processing industry, uh, mining, especially going to oil and gas and, and tourism, just to mention a few, we have those uh, opportunities. And then of course, we are good engineers. If you come to Accra again, they say, are you a carpenter, right? We are good engineers. And so we can have a lot of good furniture uh, coming from the Volta region, being driven to Accra and other places. Uh, instead, we have migrated and we are producing the furniture uh, in Angloga, in, Ku in Kumasi, uh, in other uh, capitals. But we could actually have higher level of production uh, in terms of volume and quality uh, coming from uh, the Ireland. Akbar Nogu Mirtano, a prof, a Unumada road, the Tuala Baba, Mianusrom, La Unuru Garanchi, a Miano Via Vuga, Bia Bia Obia, Mercury Ruda. Nya papa dada a to gbe agbashi awusu ovalia to gbe mere kuku na le na le kajia na li na mi epo a bia bia ma eyan ba o ba yo ma poji zo la ni zo zo mu chi o a la ke eyan osusu to yo mu chi ha yo ma da pe na 
Nano Via Huga. The Bay of Bia to Nano Via Ujiba Nyarral Gana to Kongwa. Any of the Bia Arashika Magwaba Ege Taru Nanya Amaru. Ma globe ni tai wodi dopom le ya maru nti enye ba eh ale wo wadama approach me enye na me sike eh bia aba etia wo ple amio le ngogbe na anglo duko a eh ye po ba Yet Pugumel on a mammo. Me time of Gomen of a na none of you pobe nana a secession program le Ocia. Who do tare a du prologo, Gogbeto bo, na Yakata Yasso Abutamacho. Yaka Lukumia Asil Agbanom, Pepe Sum, Be Wanaya, Apoya Ramula Ima, Qua, or Bethia, Owen Gonogane Fiao, Apple Fiaone, Ta Getting Bogogaver, a Wona Nungo, Aru Nijo Joma. Ya de Wujin and the Mo. A go ever night walk for Rurum to come in upon you, Toa. A Kugeremia at young over Niawe, near Daure, a morning told you. My carriage by me, time would you do for me in a water at young, I wrote to Prologu. Nabobony, Nagere, Nagru, and Yaome, Yapobe, a morning talky. Yakata Yatu Menyon Yitoy Be Nyare Rale Gana Mualu, Nyagare Rale Gana Mualu, Nyagere Wanoma, Menyakata Nya Adrume, Menyapa Susu Katana Yereka, Haki Yatere Jerubin, Yaka Wanawoji, Ma Etio Yenyan Alekechum, the Bakaraji at the Miaju. No more did your pomla, young one. And you have my brother, you have made your pomlo, a coming ever motor terrain, no food and to me. I go. Ta, the mark of my tank or room, and we might. Ayo, Akbano Toby, ah, Afi Miaga, I hear a prof boa, a Mianovi, Kozo Hanyabui, a baby Abiara. Aka do a vuba maklaga. Prof, individually and as a group of people, we have had to spend energy and other resources to fight off tribal bigotry and stereotyping in general. Any recommendations on how to build buffers should the concept of a kingdom or commonwealth within Agenda 2063 be misconstrued or tagged? The next one is coming from Savia. Savia says, Prof, how long are we going to decry the implications of the colonial boundaries? Next is coming from Lawrence Senya. He says, can Prof kindly share a little more on the Mau concept? Uh, Senam Kumajur says, what are we doing to carry the youth along this laudable project? Our future resides in our youth. Uh, Savio has the second one, but it's not here. Now to, uh, again, uh, Dr. Tashiyama has just posted on the chat uh, box the link to the agenda 2063, the PDF version. So uh, those who have not had it can actually go 
ungodly. So this one is coming from a, a department, University of Education, Winnebah. It says, I plead the organizers to help us to be having this kind of gathering to be going on frequently, at least quarterly, if not monthly. I love it. We can have a full TV and radio station, school purposely for ever study. Brilliant. Uh, Innocentia. Maraku Matuma don't want to know you, Gia. I love her. Oh, I'm soon. Oh, I'm soon. Do you know what? I'm fully alive, but I really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, a very important one, the misunderstanding of intention uh, when we are promoting the commonwealth. Uh, no, why should it be, why, why should there be uh, a misunderstanding? Because uh, other people do it. The Ashanti kingdom does it. And I think it's a good thing. Um, what we have uh, inherited in terms of modern democracy uh, based on uh, Western understanding, we have all embraced it and we are working with it around the world because the West also got it uh, from somewhere. Uh, ultimately, everything is linked back to Egypt and then to us. So we are the root of Western civilization in itself. Uh, so it's, it shouldn't be that foreign, but I think we make a mistake when we do not include our traditional governmental systems and structures in our yeah. modern approach to government. Uh, because if we do that, then we are leaving the past behind and we are not carrying with us as we go into the future. I think as a people, we have to find a way to preserve, nurture, and utilize our traditional systems, modernize them, and use them alongside the, uh, the governmental structures that we have. So when I look at government in Africa, I am not looking at government in Africa only based on political parties. I am looking at government in Africa in a broader sense it includes political parties. It also includes chieftaincies, uh, which are the ones that we have built on traditionally. And I think that government should invest uh, also in the chieftaincies because they help provide stability. Uh, if you only have political parties, we'll be a very divided people. But because we can come together as Anglo people, irrespective of our political affiliations, that brings some stability to us as a people. So a broader uh, sense of government, there will be misunderstandings. Uh, we cannot prevent that, but it is nonetheless a good endeavor, not only a good endeavor, but a necessary part for us as a people. The colonial boundaries, how long? Uh, I will also re 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 respond to that by saying how long. <laughs> And uh, the Mao concept, more on that. Um, I, 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 what the point I wanted to make on the Mao concept uh, is that it is, it is very, very rich. The concept of God in Africa is very, very rich. And if we African thinkers had done our homework, uh, we would by now probably all of us will be having a common name for God across the continent. Because as I mentioned to you, we did have a monotheistic revolutions uh, in the Cushitic uh, kingdoms. Um, the Amon, Amon Ray, uh, that was one. And then Aton was another. We did have these. Um, and when you, when you do your research, you will discover that uh, the word amen, which we use in Islam and Christianity uh, came from Amon Ray or Amen Ray. So the African contribution 
to even these religions. But once again, we left ours behind. We didn't improve it and we've embraced the others. So we don't even know uh, what we had before. Uh, so we cannot go back easily to a common name for God across the continent, but as a people, we can. But the point I was making on, uh, on the MAT concept, M-A-A-T, is that the reason why I'm doing further research on that is the similarities between that and uh, Mau in our religious understanding. Because in math, you are dealing with uh, the principles of truth and truthfulness. You are dealing with the principle of justice. You are dealing with the principle of righteousness and then also peace. And the requirement for, for the pharaohs and then for the kings, they had to rule by the principle of math. And math was personified as a female uh, God, so that you have a male, female God, in a sense, that understanding, male, female God, Amon and Matt. So you have that. Now, when you come to the Ewe culture, you have exactly the same thing. Um, and the Ewe form people are the only religious people in Africa who made the bold attempt to represent God uh, with, with, with human art, where one, you have a man holding the sun, and two, you have a woman holding the crescent. And that is the combination of male, female. The Gans share that with us, Ata, Na, Nyongo. And in our system, Mawu, Lisa, Lisa is the male, Mawu actually is the female. And Mawu, then you link Mawu with Matt. I have some interest there. Uh, the female representation uh, is an interesting one. But not only that, the other interesting thing is that Ewe people are known to be a people of principle. And I think that a lot of our discipline and principled approach to life has to do with working with a philosophy like the math philosophy, which is a, an African philosophy for governance, for life and governance. So as a people, uh, we should go deeper into our culture, our philosophy, and recover uh, some of these gems that we need for life, leadership, and governance today. I think that if we are just reading the Western textbooks, we are doing the world a great disservice because there are answers we have that the world needs. So that's what I wanted to say. And now the final one, encouraging the youth projects. I think that those who have means amongst us those who have means amongst us and those who are in leadership uh, should really work to promote uh, employment uh, opportunities for the youth uh, in Anglo land and our land as a whole. Uh, the whole idea of development chiefs now is a, is a popular one and we should uh, have uh, more development chiefs uh, who are Anglo people so that they can be tasked to uh, address the issue of uh, employment for our youth. Uh, it's a very important uh, uh, issue because if the youth are unemployed, then the issues of instability uh, multiply. So we have a, a big, big, big task on our hands. Now, the absence of job opportunities is the reason for our continuing migration. As I, as I said, we are a migrating people, but we need to become a settling people. And our continuing migration is precisely 
due to the absence of job opportunities, uh, absence of factories and industries uh, in the lands of the Ewe people. And uh, governments have not delivered, uh, whether we are looking at it from Togo or from Ghana. And so it seems like we, the people, that God has given some means to take the responsibility to rebuild our homelands. So I joined the youth in asking for help. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, we have only five more minutes for questions and answers. And at this juncture, I will call on Victor Atuque Klokte to uh, ask your question or do your contribution. Okay, thank you very much. Um, mine is a contribution. When our sister Dela was talking, she stressed that we have to really uh, separate uh, issues of culture from the economics. But I don't think that works. If we look back at our history, even our boundaries have never been static. Why was they moving? It was moving because of economic means. And we can strengthen our culture and it will become more dynamic if um, we build a very strong economic backbone right from homes up to uh, the clan and the people as a kingdom. We need to strengthen our economic uh, struggle emancipating ourselves that way. And that's where our culture will stand. If we have the idea that others don't respect our culture, we, she made the statement that among Ghanaians outside our boundaries, uh, she needs to remind them that she's Ghanaian also. People will respect us if we have a very strong economic backbone. They will know very well that we can't be Ghana without these people. So I think that is what we should have in mind. Then also question of boundaries. The world is changing a new philosophy is going and we won't uh, have to adhere strongly to the old boundaries of the homeland. All around the world, wherever we are, it's part of our land. And in building and strengthening our culture, just like the Chinese do, the Jews are doing all over and not stay just at where geographically uh, the world agrees that they are, but they take the whole world as their plane of economic activities and express their culture. That is how we will move forward. So I, this is the brief contribution I want to make. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh our brother Victor for that uh, contribution. Uh, we have taken note of it. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, at this juncture, there's uh, another very important personality in our midst, Reverend Dr. Nyomi from EP Church Adenta. We can see you there. These uh, program will never be complete without your input. So please, if you could give us a word. Thank you very much. And I want to thank the organizers, especially the Anglo youths for this very proactive uh, event. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Adela uh, Dadevo. It's good to learn at your feet again. Uh, something that we, the other people, we, the Anglo people, uh, really need for our time. So thank you very much. And I want to thank uh, Tabi Abadada Agbasi Ausu the second for uh, your wisdom in, in this part. I add my voice to those who say this needs not be a one-off thing. Uh, so let's let's keep that up and uh, we pray that God will continue to bless us to invest in our own part of the world. May God bless you all. Thank you very much. Uh... Uh, Reverend Dr. Nyomi, for your uh, words of encouragement. Uh, we will uh, move on quickly to give uh, uh, the platform to 
Dr. Brian Akapo, if you are there, we are trying to unmute you so you can uh, make a short contribution. Mianovi, Dr. Brian Akapo, Mia Garaman, Nova, and Garret to Amanami. Okay, Yes, I'm go go go. Bohemian okay. Toyji. In fact, Malaka Malin Doya. Mother, my dear, but you can get over here. Yes, Mia, you have a history to Amavo, body. A prof in Kenya, Papa, a Kenya believe. Yeah, I like a Mia Yabber. His re Kenya, the Dito, he came Yamia, Alareta Magranamo, because it's young Shangvama. Minya Kenya cow. Miao review me, Vanya Kenya cow. Which one should we believe? Uh, Bernard, my name is Rampola, and I talk to the Kumasa. And uh, interviewer, and you show him, and you roll my door, and you're my name, and you're my belief, you can't tell China, Katu, Plotomo, Katama, Vasagomo. I like all of Bowie. Are you Mahui, Matsogana, Prof. Prof. Marakum, Madari, and Mutton Ravia Macle? Quickly, Conana, I'll conclude the Katana in the next three minutes. Uh, Innocentia Friedrichson, I don't think we have to go uh, university only or before learning and uh, knowing our roots and culture. It needs to start from beginning school or basic school yeah, so that. Uh, uh, yeah, Then Christian uh, is saying that uh, the society has long been the one that largely thought timidity for humility and fear for respect. The young, the youth, could not challenge the status quo for fear of being labeled as arrogant and disrespectful. This has held many progressive ideas from ever coming to the fore to bring the transformative development we all want to see in our land or people. How can we change this paradigm to bring the needed development? You jumped my question, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, so uh, this question from a, a couple more than the, the access. Good idea, that's Samuel Zoonu, good idea that chiefs should be part of government. They will best be used in areas of local government. Then we have Napoleon Safodi, my own big brother in New York. He says, Mr. Zoonu, I agree 1,000% per, to your submission. However, yeah. However, our institutions will have to change to embrace that. Our political leaders over centuries are not seen to have that much respect for our tradition. Probably because our chieftaincy was dominated by not having Western education. All these stems from the colonial Africa. African political leaders were and are determined by, are determined by European and Westerners. Though wisdom is not only from uh, thank you, Mr. Safoji. Uh, yes, that that uh, there's one more Empress Mao. She says that is true. Anything you speak, you mind bring up an idea you are classified as respectful. Yeah, that's uh, aligns with the earlier one. So I will give the opportunity to our distinguished professor of the day who has taught us to just uh, make his, uh, concluding remarks, his, um, questions and um, contributions from the uh, participants. So Prof. I'll call him. Back to you. I'll call him, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, which history should we believe? <laughs> I, I will say that uh, uh, history that is published, and uh, I, I, I will encourage you to uh, look at some work that that, has, that was done um, in what we call a series that we call a handbook 
of Awerland. The one was done for the Northern uh, Awer uh, group, and then another one for the Southeastern Awer group. Um, these collections, uh, I think, are very, very credible. And uh, I also listened to some of the history uh, on Ghana web and some of the claims. And, you know, I, I also wondered, you know, how far can you go in accepting all of them? Uh, so there are other publications that are reliable. I will say that uh, there will be people who have done history that you can check with. And definitely if you are within my network, uh, we, can, we can share ideas on that because uh, one of the things we do is to actually uh, put emphasis on African studies, the history of Africa and recover the essential values within our history and experience as a people. Uh, then in terms of uh, the need to shift our perspectives, our values, our paradigms for development to take place because of uh, the confusing of, of, of fear with humility, etc. I will say, yes, we need to change our paradigm uh, and we need to be a people who are proactive we have reactions that come to us from other peoples. Uh, other ethnic groups may give their reactions to us. They may give their definitions on us. But when it comes to our destiny, we are responsible. So we have to, uh, first of all, have our own sense of dignity. We have to have our own sense of destiny. And then we also have to uh, have our own priorities for development. And so those who are economists and business people around us, uh, the Awa Mafia can respectfully uh, invite key Ewe Anglo Ewe brains to come up with a strategic development plan for Anglo land. And when we are able to come up with a strategic development plan for Anglo land, that will be comprehensive enough for us to see what roles we can play. And as I mentioned, it must include our palace. Uh, if you don't mind, it must include a study center, even if it goes to the level of a university. And then it must also include a, a communications uh, network where we are having these kinds of conversations and interactions and those who are in the diaspora can join us. And uh, we can actually be looking at the concept of nation within nations uh, by using a, a communication as a medium. But you cannot communicate and continue to have conversation if it's not leading you anywhere. So the most urgent thing is for the right people to be brought together to come up with a development plan for our land. And then of course, the last one was on the loss of respect for our traditional values on the part of government, et cetera. It is my personal persuasion that not engaging the traditional uh, governance system in modern state governance in Africa is a mistake. And African leaders must find ways to respectfully authentically integrate the traditional as a legitimate arm of, uh, of government and not only multi-party democracy. I will say that uh, it's been a wonderful time uh, with all of you. Professor Delanyo Adadevo, uh, before we uh, continue with the final uh, items on the uh, agenda, I would like to give the opportunity to another special person, John M. Lebedze, 
It will be a remiss on our part if we did not give you the opportunity to add your voice to this program. So please, sir, I have allowed you to come in. Yeah, I find it very, very educative. And secondly, I have to be very honest with you. We have an away language uh, unit within the uh, African Union, quite by a cousin of mine, Dr. Rex, uh, jo Dr. John Gajekpo, and others are part of that group. So I really enjoyed the program. So thanks so much, uh, Professor, De uh, Professor Delano Adadevo for your contribution towards this. And my other remark that I don't, I, I would like to say is this, when people talking and then referring, uh, we always have Aigbe, really pissed me off. So that is all, all that I can say so far. Thanks so much for giving me the opportunity to say a few words to you. May God bless all of us richly. Thank you very much. For those who uh, wanted to ask questions but they could not have the opportunity, we uh, are very sorry that time is not on our side and we will have to end it here. Myself, I would have wanted this to go on and on. Uh, people have also added their voices to the regularization of this program. The latest person has been the Siena president, Dr. Chachu Nyamari, who says we should make this thing a regular program so we can actually think about our homeland. Uh, at this juncture, we have on the program appeal for funds, uh, which is going to be done by Roland Akafia. Uh, Mr. Roland Akafia, if you're there. Hello, dog. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to bite the bullet um, and take the challenge from our sister, uh, Grela Gohad, and speak purely in Ever, but I also in Anglova, I also know that. <clears throat> where a combination of people, some of our people are born outside and they can't speak the English. So I'm going to stick with the English and maybe miss it with ever. Now- if, if, if we are saying we will not accept English from you, what would you do? My, my, network, my network will have a challenge. Okay. <laughs> now, what I'm about to do is, uh, uh, sorry, I have my kid in the background because I'm traveling on the road. No problem. What, we are family people. Yeah. What I'm about to do is very important um, that it should be done by somebody who is very articulate. But for some reason, the AYC executive have asked me to do it. So I'm going to try my best. Now, and I'm a little bit emotional, so I may not be very coherent. From the lecture and then the contributions by everybody, I'm very, very, very touched and uh, a little bit emotional. So forgive me if I'm not emo uh, coherent. Now. There are so many things I've picked from the lecture by Doc. I heard him talk about something that we are a people, great people. We have resources, human resources. One of them is you, Dr. Kuvo. We have a lot of, even among as just a small group of AIC youth, we have a lot of doctors, including you. We have master's holders, we have degree holders and stuff, people in various fields. So that is true. We have that. Then you move on to he talked something about the fact that fundamentals are what we are lacking. And it is true. The fundamentals are not working for us at the moment. And we need to get that done. Now, during his latter part, when he was answering questions, he also touched, uh, he touched on certain things. He talked about the fact that we even need institutions, even up to a university level, to be able to propagate what we are as Evers and also to support us. But that is exactly what AOIC is doing. We have even acquired a land to be able to do that. So we are thinking far ahead. We're thinking along the same line. Thank you very much, Professor. You also talked about, Professor talked about the fact that we need, 
we need a plan. We need a strategic plan for our area because if you don't have a plan, then you cannot achieve anything. And that is one of the key things Angola Youth is trying to do. We have recognized that we don't have an economic plan. We don't have a plan to stand on. And that is why we decided that one of the things we're going to do is to have an, a plan, a strategic plan for the area and follow through it. Thank you very much, Professor. And that is what we want to do. Now, what am I here to do today? I'm here to appeal to our own people to support the vision of AYC. We have realized AYC has been in existence for a long time. In fact, the first time I, I came into contact with it was around 2000 when the gentleman on the screen, Mr. Kedor from University of Ghana invited me that look, your name is ever, you're ever, you're from Anglaga and we, and there is this group that you need to join. We're going back to our home to teach our young ones and stuff like, and I follow them and I enjoyed what we did. And ever since I've been trying to help in a little way that I can. Now, AYC has done a lot of good stuff. We've heard from several times, we've done so many things, but what we do is that the structures are not strong. What we do is that when there's a problem, we come together trying to get people to bring their resources within a short period of time to try to fight fire. But we don't think we should be doing that any longer. We think we are at the juncture where we need to organize ourselves properly. Now, Tokyo Abadada is online. When you're sending somebody to war, you can't send them on empty stomach. So all the good things we're talking about, trying to you know, recapture our culture, embed it into our next generation, and all the good, good, good things we want to do, we cannot do them on empty stomach, just like Toby Abadada cannot send our warriors into battlefield without uh, anything in their stomach. Our current war that we are fighting is not on the battlefield with guns, but it's economic war. And we think we can only do that if we're organized properly. And that is why we have decided to organize ourselves. We want to be strong. Now, as I said earlier, when an issue comes, we just organize ourselves and put our pockets together and fight it. Now we think we need to organize. And we're setting up a secretary. In fact, a place was given to us. So we decided to draw up a budget for at least a year. And we want to have, you know, we have different people coming together to do this. But we think we want a permanent person. Their job is to, you know, go along with our battle, go along with the plan we have. And their job is every day when they wake up is to solve our issues, to take along whatever the leadership has decided to do. So we decided to put together a budget. We looked around. The budget is just a small budget of, of over 200,000 cities. Now, that budget is what the budget is going to do is we're, we're, we're giving a site. We have to clear that site. We, there, is, there are some buildings on that site we have to renovate. And uh, even that site, we have a land for the future. When we go forward, we're going to have the university, we're going to have ITC, ICT center. We're going to have a lot of things. But like I said, the idea is for us to be organized. And we need that, those funds. The budget is what you have on the, uh, the screen here. We need the funds to be able to do all those things, employ the executive director whose full-time job is to try to organize us and lead us into whatever we want to achieve. And that executive director is going to have some officers around him and with a KPI, a clearly defined KPI. And we are going to tell them as a group what we're going to do. Now, what I need from you is that, as I said earlier on, what we used to do is to, when a problem comes, we put our pockets together and try to solve it. That is not sustainable. We need to be organized. And now this is the time for us to do this. Some, I've heard some people saying, if we are not able to do this right now, then we're in trouble. Please come on board and let's do this. So what I'm asking for you is, this. there are two things. One, those of you who are not yet members of Anglo Youth, it doesn't matter, we, there is no age limit. We have people who are even 80, in fact, uh, 60 and stuff like that. They just want to solve our problems and make us strong. Uh, so what we're asking you, if you're not yet a member of Anglo Youth and you're an Anglo, please join and pay your dues. So we're looking for two things. Those who are, have joined and haven't paid their dues yet, those of you who have yet to join, please join us. Let's pay our dues. We don't want to just take money from other people and solve our problems. We're going to do that for now. So pay, join us and pay your dues. And secondly, we're now also asking you that this is a small budget. Please help us 
contribute some special donations for us to put together and have a budget to stand on our feet and to face this economic battle that we have to fight. It, please, it is a battle. Don't even make this mistake. It is a battle. When you talk about the fact that you're in UK, US, and you're not respected, people don't see you as an ever. It's because we don't have a strong economic background to stand on and then fight those things. And we want to do that. So please join us. Let's not just do the talk, 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 talk. It's also important, but let's do the, bat the real battle, which is facing us. And we need a backbone to do that. And AYC is driving that. So please come on board. And we're begging you, this is your homeland. This is the land for your children. The future children will be asking us, what have you done? And I'm begging you to try to contribute your loose might to help this organization so that you add your wisdom to us and your pocket to us. If you're willing to do this, please contact any of the leadership, but you can contact with, um, first, we have an account. When we're doing everything above board that we render account to you. So you can first contact Philip Bangini. His number is 024-079-1865. 024-079-1865. He's going to direct you as to the account where you're going to take, uh, you can direct your money to. You're not sending it to me. You're not sending it to any other executive. He's going to add an account and we're going to account for it. Or you can contact the number on the screen right now. You can contact any of those numbers and we'll be able to direct you how you're going to support. It can be material, it can be cash, it can be whatever you can do to help us stand on our feet. You can contact me. My number is 0244-160-745. You can contact uh, Ken Pedro if you're in touch with him. Even uh, our president, Mayor, any of us will be willing to direct you as to how you can support us. Please, this is very, very important. You can, you realize that a lot of things are happening in this country, that if we don't organize ourselves, this is a watershed moment for us. If we don't do this, for the sake of, let's come together, let's do the talking, but let's also put our mouth, our pocket where our mouth is, and let's do this, and we'll get to where we want to. Thank you very much for listening to us, and we hope we'll be hearing from all of you. Akpena mikata miya wedo hom anya okata miya sele professor gboglo miya okata nupo anu gboglo le anglo to ame gamu miya ni anu we are great people manya manya nu bojo bojo are coming we are great people and let's show that in fact we must sell it for better for the world to be uh, what it should be we should be leading and so please show your leadership skill show your leadership mantle and join the, uh, as, and let's do this. So thank you very much. And we'll be waiting to hear from you. Doc. Akba, <laughs> Mia for Arangudu, Mia for Ababaz and Yapa Kutukuma, Koba Zuboku, a copper, a Yapa Duzas Rarum Chief. Americama warning. It is a collective responsibility, and we are urging all of you to find a handle uh, so that we can do it together and celebrate it together tomorrow. Uh, I am going to move uh, to do a short appeal for funds for uh, another person. This one is not for fun, but appeal for vote. Mia Novi, the car, will you number Christine? Uh, is it Christine? Uh, yeah, Sadinam Klinogo. You can tell a new one to buzz as a whole Miss Malaika. Iomola, uh, upon of it that to be a lahoni. I hear in Tobamia as a Babamia at that shape who will be a Mayamia Daconi. The um, uh, Cucupum Mikata, Benamia as a Baba, as a Riviere, Namia at Daconi. Yipa Uncumema Pomiella, a moji. 
Nous sommes tous les deux en train de se faire. Nous sommes tous les deux en train de se faire. Nous sommes tous les deux en train de se faire. Nous sommes tous les deux en train de se faire. Nous sommes tous les deux en train de se faire. Nous sommes tous les deux en train de se faire. Nous sommes tous les deux en train de se faire. Nous a la bonne à fou. Le chivi, a dren de ka de ka le chivi, a veuve. A tu hachi ak bren, a ro na ira hoptel.com slash malaika. A bala mi pomi le mi ap a mok pon mo ji ena. A nouma we mi a o gafi a da koné. A nye mi o ji ji ve vien be a mi a vi a ro mi a no vi e zetoubi ha. Iha na duji la koda da mama. Me dak pone mi kataba mi ewo. Haya o nani. Mi a yo mi a no vi. Kozo chapman na wo a wo. Bapara da wo nami. Le. Enu wo. Le ma me gba. Mi a atagere mi a pe. Oh, mia no vie va do ho, Kozlo Chapman, ne va a wo, ak bapare da wo. Ak pe, ma da ak pe na, a ma si a ma yike, a gare mi wo na ya ma ak ba. Ka bapare da wo na li ya, wo ko yi nye, mo yi ji mi ak to, Anya AYC menolau AYC ya ni jago ma alu ni dia bana ma la fa kwab alu fa ni ma abe judo ha ena ikeba ma la judo do apa jipo kote moi jina tu anya bumakpola la per nuwa na o mnya ba anya vavi alu na anya angulo vijiji alu Le ople anglo vinya nyama. Mama oji na to ako goma la miyapo nuwa na oma. Kake miye kabona ama shi ama fan. Aba fifi ya miyapo taro ji nuwa ro oda oda o adago. Nami la fi aba miye jipa miyado. Miyapo tanopo le miya anglo nutoma. La agote moji wanama ala toma. Azon miye Gaji mi ata mi apa kutuku hama Aba monu kwa kwa vuvu voli Na wame matangu ada kutuku ma anami yo ha Atangu anami nu Na nuka akwa tunu jirafe na la Alo Semente la shu Nuka ke la shu ko Mie kaboba na kwe nami Ape nami mi aweba wodo Domanya wana, miawe wuto, bubolo wakpe. Yo, miya no vi, chapman, miya ta akpana waha, ba le ina, wa, ba para rama wana. Fifia, miya troyi, miya tobi, jimanola, bo, miya pa vadada, ma wusu bali sa dekle, magba dekle ngo unu, jimanami, ye, ni ay, wana ay, jimye, Zafiatu de la tour, Togui Nana me for closing remarks. Togui with a cool lobo. So a quer, Doctor Cool. Er, in your Joanna Goma, when I'm your number, Yapper, Ballet, Digla, Professor, the Lanyo, a dad de voa, Moko Eva profile, and Mokoba. É de tu, e o na minha daquele não o pai foi no chão minha foi o quinto doma, se que o vá na minha é o common wealth, pela minha foi África, é caro, se que é África, independent África, não se que agenda lá, não é twenty sixty three Na mi nya mi anto mi pole upungu detu tu wana wakata mu alimagbidungo ya upungu na mi 
Il <laughs> La Wanama Oponu Nami Odato, we spoke to the satisfaction of all of us, and uh, we saw that uh, it was food for thought for a lot of us this evening. That uh, the lectures went on very well, and um, all I can say is that. Um, I would like uh, to support uh, the president of Siena, uh, that is Nyamadi, who appealed that uh, we should continue this type of program quarterly so that uh, most of us can be learning about our ever history and culture. Now, today we got to know that uh, we have been held as one people because we have uh, a democratic system that puts us through as a united people through our religion, our history, our language and events. That is so great, which uh, some of us did not know from the beginning. Uh, we know that uh, we've been struggling to unite as Africans because of the artificial barriers that were created by our colonial masters according to Dr. Adadabo, it will be very, very difficult unless we go back to the system that were there before the colonial masters came. The artificial, eradicating the artificial boundaries, which also will be very difficult. And that is why the agenda uh 2063 have been put in place towards achieving that uh, aim i'm very thankful to dr professor professor Delano Adalevo for the in-depth uh, explanation he gave to us about uh, our other uh, kingdom and how Africa can be become uh, independent in itself, which we look forward to in 2063. Finally, I will also use the opportunity to thank the organizers, that is uh, Anglo Youth Council, for organizing these uh, lectures, because uh unfortunately too they have been doing it all the time but not in this form we've never used the zoom before to organize the meeting but because of the corona corona virus uh, pandemic uh this inno innovative uh, uh, medium was created and uh, we see uh, that uh, it's even better than the lectures that we organize uh, in the university or in other areas because people from the diaspora were able to uh, log into the system and to share the lectures with us. It has widened it so much and uh, I would like us to maintain this medium from now on and then uh, use it also for other agendas, not for only Hugbe lectures. As others, we need, we need to understand ourselves. We need to find ways and way, uh, means to create businesses in our area. We need, we, we need to find ways to create job opportunities too, and to build our nation as uh, ever. We are unique people, 
the, the problem we have is that uh, because there are no industries or businesses established in the area, we have become the immigrants that we were from Egypt to our present place. Although we have settled because of economic problems, we are still not settled. We are always going out to look for uh, better laurels from other areas. Uh, I hope uh, we've learned a lot and uh, we'll take you from what uh, uh, Prof told us and we'll see how we can come together and build our, 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 our nation. That is our kingdom as Evers or the Commonwealth of Evers so that the unique people that we are, we maintain it. Now, I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Kwasi Kuvo for the great work in uh, moderating the meeting professionally. I think uh, you need uh, more grace to your elbow. And uh, finally, I'll thank all those who were able to come on board, uh, log into the Zoom to listen to this wonderful lecture delivered by Professor Delano at that level this evening. Thank you all. Akbanao, Nia Togbi, Togbi Akbashi, I was so very, Mia Yo Mia Novi, Sadam at Zololo, when over that mamma lay at Zololo, Blabuku, you back off. Now, Lafima Garama. Um, a Fukashi Mato. Um, Hafi Manen, your vote of thanks, sir. And you're the card, the lashing, and Majibo Maglo. Griffa, show Mr. Lubbage. I bring my own and I in your bed, me on top, me up and one eye on ya. Nanya bear a mother yob, I be. Yenna, no, 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 la. No coming ever than a quick bay in your eye beto. No mother yob, I be. Yenna respectfully. Hug blown neighbor, mother cuckoo. A vow women, a low angle women, a time with the cuckoo, a young bear, a vow. La Angolomania or Yoganawa, a global as our Macadegi bear a more as seldom. That tell in a new papua Nyon toy women, a man, Nyon toy no more ye or your dom than a man. I have had to correct a number of people. Concerning this idea, and I have seen that it has worked because you have to appeal to people's conscience, and it works. Ayata majoma global show agbaji la niya me yokata the platform ya ji aje ba niya don kweji ba niya correct amu nanya ba oyomi ba aibe to ta na. And a word, ma abula, mion to me up and one eye, one year. The injet madon kajiba de vimra. Probato play at that all no yomba chapi chapi. Gaka and maka, probato a low at that all. Oh, correct, get and maka, be a mania chapi chapito. And that word has completely vanished. Yata, elemiabo. A pet, my seed of man. Davi, um, thank you very much, honorable dignitary. Mareko, am I audible? Uh, I mean, Mareko, when your internet, I'm not to do it. You're not going to be in your I adjust your role, or car, time of Bassamo Dumber, no, no, a G. But my old room. 
Ah. Honorable dignitaries, I will worry. I talk about my love and I know you have a dumb. I never have a dumb. I never have a dumb. I look for you. Um, my dear, Kuku, oh, number, you must know what I have a dumb. What sort of you? Hey, uh, Distinguished guest speaker and respected participants, on behalf of the president of AYC, in the person of Mayo Agleze for States, organizing committee, its members, and the entire people of Amaro, some who are here and some who are not, it gives me immense pleasure to express our sincere gratitude to you, Professor Delano Adadovo for taking the time off your busy schedule to be here with us. Thank you, mm -hmm. Professor. Your lecture was informative, thought-provoking, and also highly educative. I was particularly intrigued by your insight in relation to the EVE Egypt and Sudan relation. And I want to believe that many of us here have had our aha, uh -huh, but, and oh, I see moment. And I would like to say a very big thank you. Very well. I would also like to say a very big thank you to our very own Togbi Agbesi Awusu II, the Avadada of Anglo, for understanding and knowing the plight of his people, his subjects. Our gratitude also goes to Dr. Silvanus Koshi Kuo, the chief officer of the Hogba Institute. Thank you, sir. Furthermore, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to Professor Nukunya Professor Fiagbe and Professor Amanuma. Apparently, Eves don't have professors, but your presence has actually shown that Eves do have professors. Last but not the least, I would like to say thank you to the media for being part of this program. Thank you. Akbana o mia novi a sedem adzololo a ai mia zagoma a ma adog barana mausu balisa e o a rovia ora uriri da mia doma la o do primi e ji mia nu fia amara atengwa I do braiko, my father do hard that she am. Ka amama na koboji na am. 
Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Fito Gobo Lafima, me a garago fifi line and a comiada, a shinema also, Bolisa, me a joy there at the moment. Mr. Fito Gobo Lafima, no vina a cava verna. Okay, so a mere son who got a vay, a ma a coga dashina, so balisa, banemia, a zo aliagina call, wo declamia, my bad declamian go up from your dapper day. In New Catamis, a banu mis from bar, a biabio, me biao, rumchinani, a coba, for here, here, clamu catai care, or lavamia resolucci, nangona reson, namia quay, yapa. A dom uh, na mouse of Balisanto, not to Chinani or Shamina Miller, uh, La Shiai, Namia Abutamatsumia, then Fisha Fika Miller, a Bihail Mauvio Catapon Coma, a Shamanada, for my name, your Vaudo, Aponami. Let's go to the chat. They're in like the back, they're in like a back closed folder. Yeah, but <laughs>
over heaven. Oh, he's not my tenant. No. Ramudu Kaji. I need the details of the email address and six and six. Address uh twenty oh my god, that's in your future. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh. Oh, I know I'm ready, Molo. Yeah, I'm going to. What was I about? I'm going to enable everything before you start. Ah, that was easy. Good that thing. Oh, I'm going to. Come on, Emmanuel. Hey, I'll go where. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 